Hey everyone, Josh Powers here with Quixel. And in this breakdown, I'll be walking you through some of the techniques I used to construct this post-apocalyptic suburban street scene. The scene is almost entirely made up of Megascan's assets that I not only exported straight from the library, but also leveraged inside Quixel Mixer to create unique environment textures for the street and sidewalk. And though creating such a detailed environment is always a challenge, the task was much easier to achieve thanks to the gigantic list of assets available on the Megascans library, which allowed me to focus my efforts on the environment art itself and not the monotonous technical work. Also, be sure to join us on the 23rd of this month at 7 p.m. CET for a live stream where I'll be going over some additional techniques in greater depth and also answering any questions you might have. And on that note, let's jump right in. Ordinarily, I would probably build this scene with modular assets that I could snap together to lay out a larger level. However, since the scope of this level is fairly limited, I built out the street and sidewalks as unique meshes with pretty basic UVs. Okay, I've imported my geometry into Unreal, but now I need some asphalt materials to apply to the street. There are numerous asphalt materials and decals to choose from in the Megascans library, but I wanted to add some custom details to these textures, so I decided to take the asphalt scans and load them up in the mixer to create my own surfaces. The base asphalt covers most of the scene, so I wanted something that was a little weathered, but didn't have a lot of unique details that would become obviously repeated throughout the scene. I then duplicated the mix and made a couple variants of the texture, increasing the damage and adding more grime by blending in additional scan data and adding decals. Once I finished, I could either export the texture maps through the export tab, or as Victor demonstrated in the Dust 2 breakdown video, which if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend you watch it. I can save the mix to Megascans library and export straight into Unreal from Bridge. To do this, I'll go into Bridge and click on the Mixer category, where I'll find the three asphalt mixes I just saved out from Mixer. If I hold down Control, I can select all three of them and export them at once. Back in Unreal, I now have a custom surface folder with all three of the materials I just imported from Bridge. I'll copy each of the materials into the root custom surface folder. Now I could manually make a vertex blended material myself, but thanks to the Megascans Live Link, I don't have to. All I need to do is open up LiveLink, and then I'll select the three asphalt materials. And then I'll click Create Material Blend on LiveLink. If I look in a folder called Blend underscore Materials, I see that I have a blend material automatically generated for me. All I have to do now is drag and drop it onto the road, and I'm ready to paint. With the Vertex Painting tool selected, I switch between the R and G channels to paint down the different asphalt materials I just imported. Each color channel reveals a texture set based on how they're assigned in the material, and you can even paint down puddles using the blue channel. However, in this case I chose to implement the puddles through Mixer, so I don't use the blue channel. As I said before, I am primarily relying on the base texture, and then using the secondary and tertiary texture sets sporadically to add some visual interest and textural breakup to the street. This is looking pretty good, but it could definitely use a lot more details, so now I'm ready to start adding some decals. Decals are a simple but powerful way to add a tremendous amount of depth and detail to any environment. It's also perfect for hiding repetitive features in your textures, and it will help make every pixel in the environment feel unique. I like to layer decals, which I can do by adjusting the sort order, so I can quickly construct new unique details for a higher level of visual fidelity, as well as help me get the most mileage out of each decal. For example, by placing some grass tufts just over this crack, I'm not only adding a subtle depth of realism to the shot, but I'm also disguising how often I use this same crack decal in other parts of the scene. And of course, decals can also be used in much more subtle ways, such as asphalt debris, dirt, grime, and leaves, which will allow you to really transform the look and feel of your scene. After following the same process for the sidewalks, the scene is really starting to come together, so now it's time to drop in some props. I jump back into Bridge and select multiple props by holding Control, and then export them into Unreal with a single click. I start off by placing down some of the larger prop assets, like jersey barriers, trees, road signs, barrels, etc. I then move down to some smaller props, such as trash, food containers, and broken masonry. Here I'm layering decals with props to really help blend this asphalt rubble pile into the scene. Because the place decal will bleed onto the rubble geometry, it really helps soften the transition from the prop to the ground. As I mentioned with the decals, 
When you layer assets, you can get some really great looking results. Okay, so the scene is really coming along, but it's still feeling a little stale. And one of the reasons for that is because there's a lack of vegetation in the scene. In any post-civilized environment, we would expect to see nature reclaiming anything constructed by humans. To help me achieve this look, I heavily rely on Unreal Scatter Tool, also known as the Foliage Tool. Back in Bridge, I have quite a large list of 3D plants that I can choose from that will fit this scene nicely. I'll again select multiple assets by holding down Control, and then batch export them into Unreal. I could actually have LiveLink automatically propagate these plant assets into the Foliage Tool for me, just by checking these settings here. But I want to start out with just a few specific assets, so I left that off this time. I manually drag those assets into the Foliage Tool window, and then adjust some of the settings so that I can start painting them down in the grassy areas next to the sidewalk. I then take a few more plants, such as some dead grass, clovers, and some weeds, and more sparsely populate them around the area to mimic seasonal die-off and overgrowth of other non-grass vegetation. This not only adds more interest to the lawn from an aesthetic standpoint, but also adds another layer of realism. I like to place some of the plants by hand, particularly in areas where I need to be mindful of the composition of the camera shot, or in places where I need specific scale and rotation to match up with the environment, such as grassy decals, cracks, and the curb. So the scene is really shaping up, but I need to make sure that I have sufficient detail on the ground, especially for some of the closer camera angles I have. I'll pop back into the library and grab some small rocks and pebbles to spread around the scene, because these will be no larger than a couple of inches in world space, and in some cases even smaller than that. I can utilize a really handy feature in Bridge to set the LOD of the asset to 4 or 5, since they won't need to be too detailed. This will save me a lot of time and headache when it comes to performance, and it's all done automatically with LiveLink. Okay, with the rocks loaded up, I'll do a quick pass with my scale set a bit larger and the density a bit lower. Once I'm good with that, I scale it down a little as well as increase the density. And finally, I scale it down even further and make the density quite high and begin painting and erasing the pebbles to try and replicate a lot of the subtle detail we see on the ground in the real world. Though I'm painting all around this shot, I try to keep the bulk of the brush strokes close to the camera or around contrasting surfaces like garbage props so that I'm not wasting polys on pebbles that will blend in with the surface right behind it. I then do a quick pass with additional detail props such as small branches and cigarette butts. Though quality textures and decals can really take your scene far, there's no substitute for 3D geometry, especially on a low angle, up close shot like this where the effects of a normal map really start to break down. The reflected lighting, in addition to the screen space ambient occlusion and contact shadows that geometry provides, adds a boost of realism that simply is impossible to achieve with textures alone. Though we only covered a few techniques in this video, the rest of the scene was built using the same methods we just went over. And as you can see in the time-lapse footage, I was able to take a very simplistic block out, consisting of just a street and sidewalk, and transform it into a highly detailed, believable environment that's running at a smooth frame rate even on an older PC. And thanks to the Megascans library, along with Bridge, Mixer, and the LiveLink plugin, getting the content I needed to assemble this level inside Unreal was quick and painless. Being able to import ready-to-use assets with just a few clicks lets me focus more on the artistic side of the scene and less on the tedious technical tasks. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you in some way. Don't forget to tune in on the 23rd at 7 p.m. CET for the live stream. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them in the live stream. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.